Hello everyone, welcome back to Reflections. Today, um, I just want to talk about some stuff that's going on. So I'll start with a year ago. Last year when the world started to essentially fall apart, um, you know, I was digging through things and seeking and, and looking around and I found uh, some random obscure video on YouTube of just some guy, just some normal guy who had a dream. And uh it was pretty scary. It was like a God dream, but like it, I, I can't even find it again <laughs> to tell you where it is. It like got like no views, you know, it's just some guy who like woke up from a dream and, you know, recorded it for whatever reason to like warn people and tell people. And this was like 10, 12 years ago that this happened. Right. And this dream was super scary to me. So I was like, mm, we're going to turn it off. I listened to it, but like the detail and everything, it was just like this crazy warning dream. And it was like a movie that you'd see. And it was a topic that I am not a huge fan of. So I was just like, okay, whatever. You know, it was amidst like 5 million other prophecy videos that you can find all over the internet and whatever. It was just like, okay, fine. Yeah, but, it, you know, it's stuck in my head because, like I said, it's this thing that I'm not really a fan of. So anyway, fast forward to now, I don't know, a week or so ago, two weeks ago. Um, I follow this guy, this seismologist. I'm not going to put names out there because Facebook and YouTube attack him and delete him and all the things. Um, but if you want to know, you could privately message me and I'll tell you where to find him. Um, and reports on all these things that the earth has been doing and earthquakes and volcanoes and seismic activity and all this kind of stuff. So I get alerts all the time. Every time there's like an earthquake and, and all these things. So um, I saw one of his alerts and I clicked on it and I started watching it and it was actually um about an issued volcano eruption like a, a warning not from him but from you know the official volcano whoever authorities that do that and say like hey there's going to be this volcano erupting which is like okay right now that's kind of like whatever because it's been happening a lot all over the place which you probably don't know if you just watch the news um but it's been happening like everywhere all over the globe so I, I watch his videos here and there. So I, I clicked on it and I started listening and I noticed uh, the name of the uh, island that he was talking about. I, I, I recalled it from this dream that this guy had 12 years ago. And it's uh, the Canary Islands, uh, which if you don't know where they are, because I didn't at first, they are a little island chain like off the northwest coast of Africa, right? It's a little tiny little island, a um, couple islands. And basically the deal is that these islands, like all islands are volcanic, right? Every mountain is a volcano. That's just, that's just how the earth is made. So this one island, La Palma, uh, back in 1949, there was volcanic activity and earthquakes and whatever. And the island cracked in half and half of the island slid down 16 feet and just stopped <laughs> like screech like got stuck hung up on something right so there's like this 16 foot crack you could literally walk through there's videos of people walking through it like on this island that goes like all the way across it's like this eight to nine mile wide chunk of island that's just like hanging on by a thread so here's the thing <laughs> Any kind of activity, earthquake, volcanic, whatever, could prompt this chunk of island to fall off into the water. We're like, okay, whatever. Well, the problem is that when a rock eight to nine miles wide falls into the water, then what happens is called an impact tsunami or a mega tsunami. It's kind of like what you'd see in a movie if like an asteroid came and hit the water and it'd be a giant splash. Like a regular earthquake causes like ripples underneath and those are a different kind of tsunami. But this would be like an impact tsunami. So the second that this rock would hit the water, it'd be like a 3,000 foot tall wave going 600 and some miles an hour east, right? Which is just like, right, mind blowing. Um... And it would go like everywhere. It would it would it would take out huge chunks of Africa, um, Europe, everything in the Caribbean. All the islands would just be gone. Um, and it would hit the east coast of the United States from Maine to Florida, like many miles in. By the time it hit 
the coast of the United States of America, it would be about 300 feet tall and 200 and some miles per hour, which not as bad as 3,000 feet, but still pretty bad. So it's like, okay, that's the hypothetical. But then the reason for this alert was because the volcano was going to erupt, they were saying, because for many days there were earthquake swarms underneath it. So if you don't know what that is, it's when like thousands of earthquakes happen. Little tiny ones, little like little tiny ones. It's basically like the earth just pulsing, right? When when that happens, you get hundreds to thousands of earthquakes in a day in one spot. So they call it swarms. So this was happening. I think it started on like September 11th, the swarm started. <laughs> Funny date, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <sighs> these things. Um, so these, these swarms start. So you've got this rock that's hanging on by a thread on top of the earth that's going like this. Like, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to shake anything underneath that. So that's happening. So they're like, okay, well, eruption alert. And then uh, 15th, maybe, I think it was the 15th, it actually started to erupt. Like lava started shooting out of the mountain um, thousand miles into the sky, all the things. Um, and it's still erupting, actually. You can you can type it in. Um, now, of course, there's many, uh, you know, it's been constrained. You can't really find it as easily. But there are live feeds, and there are some people who are on that island that are doing daily updates showing you the truth and what's actually there. But it's not like you flip on the news and you're going to see this volcano that's spewing into the sky because they don't really want you to know. Um so that's where we're at. It's been like shooting lava um, and there's there's fissures growing throughout the island. So basically like God's poking little holes through this island with lava tubes and it's getting close to the Atlantic Ocean right now. Yesterday there were some landslides on on this this uh, this island. The roads are cracking. Basically the whole thing is just falling apart uh, slowly. Um, so here's the deal. <laughs> If that happened, right, if this rock fell into the water, it would take eight hours to hit the United States of America, which is not enough time, obviously. There's millions and millions and millions and millions of people on the east coast of the United States of America that would not be able to evacuate or anything, even if they did, okay? We've got 44 nuclear power plants on the east coast. We've got Washington, D.C. on the East Coast. We've got the Stock Exchange on the East Coast. We've got lots of harbors and shipping and many, many, many large companies' headquarters in New Jersey on the East Coast. We've got lots of things on the East Coast that run this country. So even if every single human was spared, we'd have no power no more stock market, no economy, no food, no cell phones, all the things, right? This is not just the United States of America. If you think that wouldn't affect other countries, well, then you're just wrong, right? So forget about all the islands and all the places and all the things that would happen from this. There's There are mass quantities of chain reaction things you can go through in your mind if you want to go nuts and be really scared. So, why am I telling you this? Not to scare you, which is going to be the first thought. Fear monger, right? Um, not to say that it's happening. Not to say that, you know, you should start stocking up on food or any of those things. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you any of that. Um, <laughs> it's funny. A year ago, um, I was trying to decide if Dana Coverstone was a false prophet or not. And I'm sure you know who he is by now because he had all these dreams, right, about these crazy things happening and all these crazy, crazy, terrible things like that. Um, and I paid real close attention, right, because you have to discern these things from people. And when he shared his dream, especially the first one, it was, uh, he gave a message of, you know, like, prepare and stock up on guns and ammo and food and shelter and all that kind of stuff. And 
in that moment, I decided, I decided that he was a false prophet because his message was not repent and find Jesus. His message was stock up on stuff. Now I'm thinking, I still don't know if his stuff was true or not, but I do know that you can get a message from God that is true. You can be a prophet and you could deliver that message very wrong. <laughs> you can mess it up and you can tell people the wrong thing and you can give the wrong advice and you can say stock up on stuff and and think about this and run away and have a bug out bag and all that kind of stuff and that sounds really good um and you can also just say you know sit tight with a sign that says repent and tell everybody that runs by you trying to save their lives like find jesus you can tell people lots of things I don't want to do any of that. I, I, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. I'm not trying to tell you anything. Do I think this is going to happen? Do I think? Yes. Yes, I do. Do I think it's going to be soon? Maybe. But I have no idea. I know that the Bible tells us a lot of things like this is, are going to happen. In the end of all the things. Lots of scary things like this are going to happen. Um, so I believe God's word and I know that things are coming. I don't know when or how or where, but I do think it's like him to slowly have this thing happen, to slowly roll out information like this, to slowly warn us and say, Hey, listen, you got to figure this out. And I don't think what he's telling us to figure out is how to like secure our funds and secure a bug out bag and secure, you know, how much food you have stocked. I think what he's telling us is like, <laughs> get your stuff together, repent, know that I am God and know that I am in control, know that you guys are way off track and you need to figure it out in a hurry. I think stuff like this, the stuff in the end of the Bible, right? The stuff where God says like, okay, tribulation time or past trials and, and little tribulations, we're into great tribulation and judgment time. When God decides those things, when God pulls the trigger on judgment and wrath, it's it's done. It's a done deal. It's it's not like, well, in the middle of it, we'll just, you know, we'll just figure it out. Read the read the book. This is not me. Like in the tribulation, there are people that get saved. The tribulation doesn't stop because they repent, because they get saved, because the hundred and forty four thousand are out preaching. It doesn't stop, it gets worse. It gets worse because everyone else continues to curse God. Everyone else continues to say, you're a mean, evil bully, and you're just doing this stuff, and, and you're just playing God because you can play God. And he's like, yep. There's only so far that we can go. We are way past our expiration date as far as I'm concerned. I think he's been highly gracious and highly merciful with this nation and I know everybody else feels that way too. Everybody's paying attention because I've heard all the things of, oh, uh, you know, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah and all these places if he doesn't hold us accountable. Guys, could he be holding us accountable with this? Could this happen to hold us accountable? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, it could. Will he save the righteous? Yep. But, okay. <laughs> okay. You're here, you're here then, what do you do? What, what, what do the righteous do? What, what, is, what does everybody else do? Are, you, are we already past the time? I, I've heard videos lately from other people who are saying, are we in the danger zone? Have we passed our time of repentance? Have we passed it? And now it's just a matter of other moments that, that God's putting together for other things. Have, have we passed the time that some people can repent? I know a lot of people probably think, well, that's not possible. You can always repent. You can always repent. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think when he knows you're not going to and when you harden your heart and you turn your face from him so many times, no, there's an expiration on that. There is a point in here over and over and over and over from the very beginning, from the very beginning where he just says, nope, like I'm done. That's done. And when entire nations 
act and do and turn and harden the way that they are. He has to discipline them. Uh, so what do we do? What do we do? Uh, we don't scare people, okay? Because that's not from God. That's from the enemy. That's from Satan. We don't scare people. This is not to scare you. I called my family on the East Coast, and I told them about this. And I'm like, listen, this is not a be scared thing. This is not a be scared. God does not say to fear. God says repent. Like, if you're not hardened yet, and you're not cursing God, you need to repent. You need to super, super, very much right now, repent. Figure out who you are. Figure out all the things. Get on your face and beg him. Beg him to count you worthy, to escape the wrath, and then beg him to save your family. And beg him to convict everyone else. And beg him to soften hearts quickly. Because I see a lot of people getting closer to Jesus right now, a lot. And I see a whole lot more getting really, really far away and getting really hard and really angry and really aggressive and really coming at the church like they have not before in this country. Like even in my personal little tiny little bubble that I'm in, in Western New York, where there's not a lot of people. It's going like this. And do you know why God does this? Why he separates? It's so that he can wipe away, clean things up. He tells people all the time in here, the righteous, to flee, to get away, to move aside. Do not be in the way of my wrath. It's coming. It only comes suddenly upon the wicked. He says it all the time. Revelation 3, 3, he says, you will not know if you're not watching. If you're not, if you're not righteous, if you're not paying attention, then you're not going to know and it's going to be sudden and it's going to be a thief in the night and it's going to be all the things. But when you're righteous, when you are in tune with him, when you're paying attention, you're going to know and you're going to hear him saying over and over and over again, get out of the way. It's coming. Yes, he does do this. Yes, the Old Testament is relevant. Yes, he's still God. Yes, he still feels and acts the same way. I'm sorry. So, the reflection for today, I guess. <gasps> Repent, please. Please, 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 please. Don't look at this as like, oh, you know, I gotta, don't, please don't go to Walmart and buy all the toilet paper. Please. Oh my gosh. What do you think that is going to do for you? Please, do not, this is not a panic thing. This is a like, God's not happy. I can't imagine how he feels. And he is far, 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 far greater than me because I would have done stuff so long ago. It is beyond disheartening the way that this world is, and especially this country that has been so blessed, so blessed. And we've just spit in his face. On all levels, especially in the church, actually, that's that's a little more um, upsetting, is how the church has responded to God in this country. We should be ashamed of ourselves. And then we need to repent, like right now, please. Like, I'm just begging everybody, just please repent. And it's not so we can escape this. You can't, you... As a whole, are we going to escape it? Nope. You can't escape the tribulation either, people. It's going to happen. We can't, you know, people have thought like, oh, is this thing starting? Like, can we just pray against the, the seven years of great tribulation? No, you can't. No, you can't. But what you can do is pray for yourself and pray for the people and pray that every last person who's willing even remotely to get it, gets it, that they wake up. This is like grab the ones and twos that you can and jump in the boat. Like now. Now. 
like now, please, 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 please repent, Mm -hmm. repent and just binge on God in every way that you can and just tell everybody to please just find Jesus in a hurry. That's it. It's just very simple. And this is not an escape route because that's not going to work. Don't try that. It's not going to work with him. He's not going to buy it. Oh, I, I want you now just so that I'm saved from this bad thing coming to the cup. It's not going to work. He knows your heart. Your heart needs to realize who you are and how you actually need him. And it's not just for this because you know what? If I died right now, it wouldn't be the worst thing ever. I'd be with Jesus. It'd be pretty great. Dying, you don't have to fear death. If you want to fear something, fear what comes after that if you don't repent. Fear that, because that's forever. That's permanent. You don't get a choice afterwards. Don't fear death. Don't fear these things on this planet. Don't fear any of that. I can go on and on and say it over and over, so I won't. I love you guys. I love all of you that I don't even know. I don't, it, I just do. I, I don't want anybody to go through this. I don't want anyone to be scared. I don't want anyone to go to hell. I don't want any of this. I wish this was a totally different world. I wish this Bible ended differently. <laughs> but it doesn't. But we have hope. We have the blessed hope. And we have Jesus. And after all the bad things at the end of the book is a lot of really good things. And he comes back. And this place is what it should have been from the beginning. That's what you want to be part of. You want to be part of that. You want to be in that group. All you got to do is love him back. So guys, please share this video. Please do not be scared. Please do not freak out. Please do not call me a fear monger. That's not what I'm doing. I am not saying anything's happening. I'm not a prophet. I am none of those things. I'm just telling you the facts that are out there. You can look them up. It's happening. And I'm just telling you where we should be, which is on our face, repenting and loving God. Mm-hmm. So I love you guys. God loves you very, 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 very much. Please share this. And... Have a great week.